Hello and welcome to another video. In this video I want to talk about Frances Shea and her struggles with mental health and her death in June 1967. I don't think I will do a timeline of Frances. I think I will just chat about her in general and offer some of my thoughts. I haven't read the book The Tragic Bride that is about Frances so I'm not sure what facts I can bring you about her. It is a book I would like to read though at some point. Frances met Reg in the late 1950s and I think she was actually still at school at the time. I'm not too sure what the age of leaving school was in the 1950s but I suppose we can assume she was about 15 or 16. Reg would have been around about 25 or 26 as there was a 10 year difference between Reg and Frances with Frances being born in 1943 and Reg being born in 1933. Frances was born into what seems an ordinary family as far as criminality is concerned. Her family wasn't really from the world the twins grew up in. I know her brother Frankie worked for the twins as a driver but as far as her father when I don't think he was into any criminality but I could be wrong but he did work for the twins later though at the Wellington Way Club in Wellington Way in Bow and he was arrested there in a police raid on the 3rd of June 1960 where quite a few of the firm were mopped up in the raid that day. Getting with Reg was obviously a big mistake for Francis. I'm not too sure what Francis's personality was because with all things Cray there is conflicting reports Maureen Flanagan, Violet Cray's hairdresser, said that Frances was quite timid and shy and on the other hand, Frances' niece says in a Daily Mirror article that she was a drug-taking wild child and not timid. I'm not sure which of these is true. Johnny Squibb, the twins' good friend, did say that Frances didn't want to be out in clubs all night. Frances wanted a different life than she didn't want to be out all night long in clubs and things like that you know she didn't want that so that does point towards Frances not being a wild child as her niece puts it her niece would have heard lots of stories about Frances from the family though but her niece was only a very small child when Frances was alive so I'm not too sure which one to believe out of them I would probably go for the more timid nature I think getting with Reg would not have been a mistake if it was just Reg but we have to remember where there is a Reg there is a Ron. I think with just Reg on his own things might have worked out differently for Francis and Reg. Things would have still been difficult but I think Reg's life would have been very different without Ron. By all accounts Ron hated Francis. Well Ron didn't really like any women in general apart from his mother and a girl called Monica but I believe he had a hatred for Francis and possibly a deep one. He saw Francis as a wedge between him and Reg, a barrier. While he was probably happy for Reg, being happy, it just wasn't the best situation for Ron. There was a real threat that Reg could break away from things. Not entirely but there was a chance that Reg could have stepped back a bit especially if he had had children which was a possibility. I think the club life for Francis was probably okay at first but the novelty would have soon wore off. At the time Francis was with Reg the twins club life was in full swing and Reg would have been at his clubs every night that is assuming that their clubs were open every night and like I say this would have been okay at first but once it became a normal routine, it would have got old pretty quick. I didn't know Frances, so it's difficult to say what type of life she wanted with Reg. She would have enjoyed aspects of Reg being a feared villain, the respect she would have got, the safety she would have felt in Reg's company. I don't know if she witnessed any violence of the twins, but it's possible as violence was quite frequent with the twins. I don't believe she herself received any violence from Ron or Reg. I know it's portrayed in the film Legend of Reg doing this, but I'm not sure I believe that. 
I know Francis' niece said publicly that Reg never hurt Francis in any way with violence. So I think that we can believe that. Lots of people might see legend though and think that it was true and that Reg was violent towards Francis. It's possible that Reg was verbally abusive to Francis though, especially after a night on the drink and especially when they were actually living together. I think the big melting pot for Reg and Francis would have been at Cedra Court where Reg had a flat directly underneath Ron's flat. This time would have been very bad for Francis. It was said that Reg was up at Ron's flat quite a lot in the evenings. This is said by John Pearson, but we don't know if that is completely true or not. So we have to go by what he says. Like most things with the twins, it's hard to work out what is actually true. But Francis living in close proximity to Ron would not be good, especially with Ron disliking her like he did. I'm not sure how long she actually lived at Cedra Court, as they did have other flats also, including one at Green Lanes. Despite their rocky relationship, they did last quite a while though, and that was from the late 1950s up until her death in 1967. I'm sure Francis loved Reg, and we know that Reg loved Francis. They married in April 1965 in what seemed a happy occasion. Well, from the Cray side, at least, it was a happy occasion. The Shays were not happy about it, with Francis's mother wearing black at the wedding, which was more suited to a funeral. They never hid the fact that they disapproved of Francis's relationship with Reg. He was barred from their house at some stages of the relationship, but I'm not sure if this was by them or by Francis. Even after the marriage, things continued to be rocky for Francis and Reg, and the happy wedding day became a distant memory. In March 1966, Ron Cray killed George Cornell in the Blind Beggar pub in Whitechapel. Francis's relationship with Reg at this time was almost non-existent, and on the 22nd of March 1966, Francis changed her name by deed poll back to Shay. I do wonder if the Cornell killing spurred this decision on, as it was very soon after it. It seemed a bit of a coincidence. It seems like the Shays wanted to distance themselves from the Cray family. It is debatable if this was Francis's own decision or the Shay family's decision. They were mainly a straight going family as far as criminal activity goes, bar Francis's brother. Frankie's association with the twins, so they wouldn't want to be linked in name to murder. On the 23rd of June 1966, Francis wrote a letter to Reg, which he never received, and it is as follows. I am not in the least interested in seeing you ever again in my whole life, and I really mean that. I am only interested in getting the papers through and getting my annulment. Don't ever try to contact me, not ever again because I've had enough of the life I've had to lead so far. I'm keeping myself occupied at the moment and I don't want any interference from you ever again. So just get out of my life and leave me alone and let me forget the past. Francis. Then Francis wrote another letter around the same time, which I will also read. Your low breed, sickly mouth, ugly face sickened me. If I remember words of this effect from your mouth, fucking old battle axe, which are only suitable for your type of creatures. Crawl back to the gutter, get some fucking old battle axe to be a dumb blonde old slave for yourself. Get a robot, a stupid woman void of humanity, unfinished with you forever and don't come crawling back gutter snipe. Have the decency to let me live my type of life and you can stink in yours unless you want a ghost to haunt you. It's obvious by the letters that Francis had reached the end with Reg. It would have been a very tough time for her and on the 17th of October 1966 her father found her unconscious from an overdose of barbiturates at the family home in Ormsby Street in Hoxton. She was admitted to St Leonard's Hospital in Hoxton. Reg heard about her overdose and went to the hospital but he was refused entry to see her.
This time would have been chaos for Reg. The trouble with France's and Ron's murder of George Cornell in March 1966. This was the start of things spiralling out of control for the twins and it would only get worse with the freeing of Frank Mitchell in December 1966. On the 30th of January 1967, Frances once again attempted suicide. She locked herself in the front room of her parents' house and turned the gas on on the gas fire. She was found in the nick of time though and once again she was taken to St. Leonard's Hospital in Hoxton. Frances was in a bad way by now and she seemed determined on suicide. After being discharged from the hospital, she went to live with her brother Frankie in his flat in Wimborne Court in Hackney. Frankie Shea lived there with his common law wife called Lily. They kept an eye on Frances at the flat and she seemed to settle down. I think Reg and Frances tried to rekindle things around May of 1967 or the very start of June as they had booked a holiday to Ibiza. As we know this never happened and unfortunately Francis did succeed in committing suicide on Wednesday the 7th of June 1967. She was found by her brother Frankie at the flat in Wimborne Court. Reg said that he called at the flat that day but he couldn't get in. He later said about the day Francis died in his book Born Fighter which is as follows. I saw the window open and I was going to climb through, but I hesitated. I did not want any conflict with the in-laws. I then drove off to Kingsland Road where I normally get my hair cut. And while I was waiting in the chair for my turn, I had a strange premonition of a funeral procession. Somehow I knew it was the funeral of Francis. I could see it all before me. When I left the barbers, I went back to the flat in Shoreditch and one of the friends of Frankie Shea, my brother-in-law came towards me as I pulled up in the car. He told me in faltering words that something had happened and that Francis was dead. The inquest of the death of Francis Shea took place on the 13th of June 1967 with the verdict recorded of suicide whilst of unsound mind and death by barbiturate poisoning. The death devastated Reggie and he blamed the Shea family with them in turn blaming him. It was a bit of a mess and very tragic. Francis' death would have been the catalyst for Reggie going on and killing Jack McVitie in October 1967. Reggie was dominated by his twin brother Ronnie and Reggie joined his brother in becoming a murderer. Francis suffered from mental health issues at least from the age of 13 but it is more than likely it took root before then. I have said it in a couple of other videos but I will say it again. Mental health issues back in 1967 and before was not really talked about and the help for people with mental health issues was not like it is today. Today there is all sorts of avenues for people to go down. People today are more open about mental health and even though it is still very hard to deal with, you do feel less alone in the suffering. Back then Frances would have felt alone and the help she would have got would probably have been minimal. Maybe a psychiatrist or her doctor would have talked to her about her mental health but it was more hidden then. There was probably a fear of being packed off to a psychiatric hospital so speaking about it was probably not an option back then it was more a case of pull yourself together Frances would have been almost unmonitored with her mental health and the same would have applied to Ronnie Cray also with his mental health issues it was a very difficult time for Frances and it is very sad how it all ended for her we could have been Looking at a very different Cray story if she would have survived and things had worked out for her and Reg. I doubt very much that Reg would have murdered Jack McVitie if Francis was still alive. As we have to remember that McVitie's murder came about because Reg had pretty much given up on life and given into Ron's demands. 
since Francis um, committed suicide. Reggie thought so much of Francis, he's, he's life ended. That's the way he looked at it. Told me so out of his own mouth. Ron's demands were of Reg killing somebody. There is talk of Ron killing Francis, but I don't really think I believe that. She was safely tucked away in her brother's flat at Wimborne Court in Hackney at the time, and it would have been difficult for Ron to do this. If she had been at a flat with Reggie at the time, say at Cedra Court, then I suppose it could be a possibility and it could have raised questions, but I don't think I can believe that Ron had a hand in Francis's death in any way, as it suggested, as in actually killing her or making her take pills. I don't think I believe that. Did Ron contribute to her early death? It's possible, by all accounts, he hated her and openly abused her verbally in front of people. To what extent, we don't know. We are just going on what people have said, like Johnny Squibb. The hostility was there continuous because Ronnie used to really, really go to town with her, you know. I don't think Johnny Squibb has a reason to lie, so we can take it as fact. I'm not sure what sort of relationship Francis had with the twins' mother, Violet, but I should imagine Francis was under scrutiny. Reg, like Ron, was put on a pedestal by Violet. I didn't know Violet, so I can only guess at things, but maybe Francis was not what Violet wanted for Reg. There is the chance that the whole family berated Francis, whether that was openly in front of her, who knows. And invariably their raz was only over the, the family and the way that they treated Francis, and she had good reason to. You know, they didn't treat her nice at all. All this type of stuff could have contributed to Francis's death. Would she still have done it if she wasn't with Reg? Yes, it's possible. She might have done it eventually, or at the very least, she might have attempted it a few more times. But the life Reg lived and the circumstances surrounding Reg's life, like Ron being Ron, it all more likely contributed to what happened on the 7th of June, 1967 when Francis took her own life. The death devastated Reggie and he had a kind of death wish after that, not really caring what happened to him. I don't think he would have killed Jack McVitie if Francis was still around. The whole Cray story could have been a lot different if Francis had not committed suicide. We could be talking about completely different things or maybe not even talking about the twins at all. Francis, I suppose, you could consider a big part in the downfall of the twins and it probably all started with her death. Ron did kill Cornell before then of course but it seemed like he had got away with that. Nobody was really talking to the police and I don't think anyone would have talked for as long as the twins were free men. If Francis had survived it would have been difficult also for her to have another life away from Reggie if she decided to do that especially if she stayed in London Albert Donoghue did say about this in an interview the problem was an ordinary person would have had a gone for a divorce and met someone else and she couldn't do that if you can imagine some handsome young chap falling for Franny Cray and Reggie heard about it, you know. He's going to have his legs cut off. You know, so she could never have a, another life, sort of thing. I think this is true, and any sort of normal life with another fella, she, she would have to relocate somewhere. But even then, there would be a big chance that Reggie could find her. Maybe Frances knew this, and this contributed to her taking her own life. Maybe she knew that she could not have another life outside of Reggie. Sadly, Francis's brother Frankie Shea also committed suicide in 2011. I believe he had throat cancer and he was aged 71. Maybe it all got too much for him and he wanted to go out on his terms and in his own time. Very sad. 
Frankie Shea did say in a newspaper article once that Reggie only got with Francis because he spurred Reggie's advances on him. I don't know how true this is, but it's possible Reg was bisexual, so who knows? He just hid it in his early years. There is a few newspaper stories about Francis that came out around the same time as the film Legend, from her having electric shock treatment to drunken abuse by Reggie. I'm not sure about the electric shock treatment, but I would believe the drunken abuse by Reggie um, but only verbally. With Frances it was very tragic what happened. She was only 23 years old when she passed away and I think things would have been a lot different for Reg if she had survived but it just wasn't to be. I'm not sure what else to say about Frances here really. Like I said I haven't read the book The Tragic Bride so there will be a ton of stuff that I don't know. I do feel I should have researched this video a bit more by maybe reading it. I kind of get the feeling that these videos are a bit boring and they don't really offer much. I mainly try and give my thoughts in these videos but obviously I don't have all the information at hand to tell you stuff. I do mainly go by what I've read in the past. I do try and make these videos as entertaining as I can. And there is not many new videos on the craze on YouTube. You do get a few pop up from time to time, like Chris Lambriano interviews, but it is mostly lots of old stuff. So I do try and make something new for people to watch. Before I go, I will mention the death of Nipper Reed. That happened the other week. He died from COVID-19 and I believe he was in hospital for a foot infection. It was very sad hearing this, but he did live to a very ripe age of 95. I think even the twins would have been sad of his passing if they were still alive. It took a huge amount of guile and determination to stop the twins in 1968. While I don't agree with the prison sentences they received in 1969, I appreciate the enormous effort that Nipper and his team put in to nail the twins. They did need to be stopped at that point, things were getting out of hand with the twins by the time 1968 rolled around with cyanide briefcases and explosives on the streets of London, almost. Ron was in control and he was out of control. Nipper will always be remembered just like the twins and you can't mention them without mentioning Nipper. So that's about it for this video. I hope you are all staying safe and staying indoors as much as possible. I would like to thank you all for watching the video. Um, I'd like to thank you all for the comments that you leave. It's always interesting reading what you have to say. Um, so that's about it. I'd like to thank you all for watching and I will see you again in the next video. Thank you. Mr. Foreman, I want you to ask me simply by saying yes or no. Have you all reached a verdict in the case of Ronald Gray in, in, in the first indictment? Yes. Have you reached a, a second indictment? Yes. And then uh, went back to say, and then how do you find Roger? And he said guilty. And then he said guilty. And I was looking down like this and I couldn't look up. My eyes were full of tears. It, it was a, a bit of a, you know, all the work that we'd done was justified. <laughs>